Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So this is the next lecture, lecture number 5, which is based on the safety of natural dyes. So far we learnt about what are natural dyes, what is the history of natural dyes, then we learnt about the classification of natural dyes and subsequently we learnt about the structural details of natural dye. But we have to also be aware of the safety aspects of natural dyes. Safety issues with natural dyes. In present scenario, environmental consciousness of people about natural products, renewable nature of materials, less environmental damage and sustainability of natural products has revived the use of natural dyes in dyeing of textile materials. This was one of the primary reason that as compared to synthetic dyes, natural dyes were found to be eco-friendly and I explained the meaning of eco-friendliness and sustainable. Natural dyes can be used for dyeing almost all types of natural fibers. Recent research shows that they can also be used to dye some synthetic fibers as well. Apart from their application in textile, natural dyes are also used in the coloration of food, medicines, handicraft articles and in leather processing. Many of the dye yielding plants are used as medicines in various traditional medicinal therapies. And this I have mentioned in the previous lecture that some of the dyes were found to be anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. There are several advantages of natural dyes. Production is soft, lustrous, earthy shades production of rare colors, extraction from renewable sources because as we know petroleum products are getting depleted and by 2050 I think we will have no petroleum product remaining for our use and therefore synthetic dyes will be, be going out of market and we will have to then depend on the renewable sources non-hazardous dye nature, biodegradability. Now these are the two main factors and main advantages that they are not harmful, non-hazardous as well as biodegradable. That means if you throw away the natural dye extract, it will biodegrade because it is coming from biotic material. Is it, it is easy to dispose, lack of environmental threats and reduce carbon emission. So all these categories are the advantages of natural dyes and that is why there is a resurgence of natural dyes. However, every good thing has some limitation. So, let us also look at the limitations of natural dyes. Lower reproducibility of colors and shades. That means till quite some time this was more of a laboratory and hobby club that people were using natural dyes for dyeing. But for commercialization purposes larger quantities of these dyes have to be extracted and there the reproducibility was a big challenge or limitation. Now if I get a dye source that is the plant from say northeast Arunachal Pradesh 
and if I get the same plant from south, from the hilly regions of the south region, they may or may not have the same dye content because of the geological reason, because of the climatic reason and many other factors. So, reprodu reproducibility becomes a special issue. Less availability due to unawareness. Now, till very recently, almost uh, a decade back, there were only a handful of dyes that were being used. Indigo, madder, kutch, turmeric, rheum and uh, catechu and a few more tannin categories. Later on, when more research started happening in natural dyes, now at least I know about my research group that we were able to find 55 good sources of natural dyes and therefore, availability was not an issue and was overcome. Low color yield due to primitive dyeing techniques, because people did not have good extraction methods and were not able to extract the dye completely. Therefore, it was taken as a limitation and the color quality was low in color yield, inadequate fixation. People did not use moderns, biomoderns, enzymes, modifiers to enhance the color. It was only through intensive research that it was found that there can be a possibility of improving the color intensity by proper fixation of the color. Necessity for metal moderns. With the majority of natural dyes, it is necessary to have a chelating agent unless and until we have the metal mordant or a biomordant or an enzyme, the intensity of the color does not intensify and the dye adherence to the fabric is also not good. Presence of heavy metals if unsafe that is metal mordants that are used such as copper and chromium should be avoided. But let me tell you that using copper and chromium does add different shade to the same extract. As I mentioned earlier that from the same extract of the plant, the colorant can have a different implication on the fabric by using different metal salts. The limitations were also found that the extraction processes were too long and they too much time resulting in soil waste. Although textile dyeing with natural dyes is considered environmentally friendly, there are many limitations too. One of the limitation of natural dye is that dyeing process takes a longer period of time than synthetic dyes. Furthermore, in order to improve fastness properties, mordanting process need to be treated. Purification of natural dyes for dyeing machine is not sufficient and costly. Sources of natural dyes are also limited. After the dyeing process, a variety of dyes and mordant agents can emerge in the washing bath. Natural dyes are however, biologically degradable. Color tones of natural dyes are limited and natural dyes are more expensive than synthetic dyes. This is what was thought of, but that is a myth. If you are using a local flora, then it is cheaply available. You are not wasting money in the transportation. Another aspect is that if you are using a temple waste or a forest waste or a kitchen waste, then also it is uh, not going to be cost extensive. So, one has to choose the plants that are locally available and 
that would be the best choice. Limitations can also extend being one of the most important problems of natural dye is the repeatability and that is limited. Well, that is no more a valid reason why because the whole natural dye process has been standardized. Though requiring expensive and complex natural dyes, bright colors can be obtained in standard conditions. Some of the natural dyes are sensitive to pH changes resulting in color changes occasionally. In natural dyeing, light fastness, wash fastness and rubbing fastness are poor in some of them, but that also has been overcome because if the dye adherence is good with the help of metal chelation, then these fastness properties can be overruled or can be maneuvered and managed. In order to improve the fastness properties of natural dyes, mordanting process is treated to textile material before dyeing. Synthetic fibers are not dyed with natural dyes. Well, this is also not any more a uh, limitation because some of the uh, fibers which we will cover in the uh, lectures to come natural dyeing of polyester, natural dyeing of polyamide which is nylon has also been carried out. Some natural dyes have allergic effect. So, unlike synthetic dyes that are created in the laboratory, natural dyes are obtained from plants that are dependent on growing season. These may be appearing as natural dyes, but if a proper farming is done at a proper time, this does not remain as a real limitation. To overcome some of these limitation, the presence of metal species in dyeing wastewater can be sufficiently reduced by using plant tann tannins as biomordants that is acacia, catechu or terminalia, arjuna or punica granitum and enzymes such as diesterase, cellulases, amylases for all the fabrics. The figure here shows an example of the role of enzyme in binding the colorant to the fabric. Now, if you look at this structure which is given on the right hand side you see how the colorant molecule first combined with the enzyme diesterase and which in turn combines with the molecule, silk molecule or the surface molecules of the silk fabric. So, first silk is treated with enzyme and then it is treated with the colorant and that is how the dyeing process proceeds. And so, the limitation of not getting good color, and good color adherence can be overcome. Better chelation with rare earth salts. Why rare earth salts are better chelators is because they can expand their coordination number as compared to aluminum or any alkali earth metal or even transition metals. So, transition metals can have two uh, coordination number, but they these can expand to four to five coordination numbers, which is an added advantage for chelation of the metal ions with the colorant molecule. And we have seen this in this particular slide that a rare earth salt can have 6 combining capacity as shown in this diagram. Wastewater of natural dye house can be reused. Unlike non-renewable raw materials of synthetic dyes, natural dyes are mostly renewable and sustainable. Natural dye sources are agriculturally renewable, sustainable vegetable plant based colorant sources, whereas main source of synthetic dyes are limited to oil and coal. 
the production of synthetic dyes pollutes the water and the environment by toxic waste which in which majority of the water sources get polluted by waste water from residual dyes used in coloring, generally containing chemical moieties like sulfur, nitro and azo groups of the synthetic dyes. However, biodegradability of natural dyes and the use of waste water for irrigation is now becoming a common practice. So, there you see the waste water from the synthetic dyeing plant and the waste water from natural dyeing plant have different kind of chemicals inherent in them. The natural dye containing waste water is biodegradable and can be used for irrigation purpose, but that is not true for synthetic dyes and the water waste water from the synthetic dyeing solutions. Apart from these, metal species like chromium, zinc, lead make dyeing waste water more deteriorating and when released without treatment in, in immensely inhibit health of the water body in terms of BOD that is biological oxygen demand and COD chemical oxygen demand. So, it makes the waste water highly polluted and therefore, we have to take into account how much of metal salts we are using and how we can recycle and reuse it. How safe is natural dyes? In that case, we now need to uh, understand the safety of natural dyes. This deterioration greatly affects health of water ecology comprising aquatic animals and plants and overall health of the water bodies. The reason of limited use of natural dyes in textile industry to some extent is due to unparalleled color depth and quality of synthetic dyes. So, what are we compromising on? On the aquatic animal and plants life in the water body? versus the safe natural dye which is biodegradable and not so toxic for the aquatic animals and plants. But this, in a, this is an excessive big price to pay for a fancy colored cloth of one's choice. Thus, there is abundant prospective to develop and establish natural dyes as the color for people. Now, we have to think in terms of what is good for our society, what is good for our human being and we should practice only that. That is why sources of natural dyes are continually renewed in nature. So, it might seem that natural dyes are not only environmentally friendly, health friendly, but above all cost friendly and consumer friendly. So, in a way they are safe, sustainable and desirable. The biodegradability factor we should understand about natural dyes. Natural dyes are derived from plants, animal and mineral sources and have been used for centuries to color textile, food and other materials. The biodegradability of natural dyes depend on their chemical composition and in general they are considered more environmentally friendly than synthetic dyes. So, over these lectures we have understood one main thing that natural dyes are safe, safer than synthetic dyes. The plant based dyes, many natural dyes come from plants such as indigo, madder, turmeric and various fruits and vegetables. These dyes often consist of organic compounds that can be broken down by natural processes. Microorganisms in the soil and water can play a role in the biodegradation of these plants based dyes. Animal based dyes, some natural dyes are derived from animal sources such as cochineal from the scale of the insect, shellac 
from the lac buck. The biodegradability of these dyes depend on their specific chemical composition. In general, however, natural dyes derived from animals are likely to break down more easily than certain synthetic alternatives. Water and soil condition, what is the effect on water and soil? The biodegradation of natural dyes is influenced by environmental condition such as the presence of moisture, microorganisms and oxygen. In aerobic conditions, natural dyes are more likely to undergo decomposition through microbial activity. As compared to the synthetic dyes, natural dyes are generally considered more biodegradable and environmentally friendly than many synthetic dyes. Synthetic dyes often contain complex and stable chemical structures that can persist in the environment for extended periods of time leading to potential ecological concern. Hence, it is important to note that while natural dyes are generally more biodegradable, the overall environmental impact also depends on factors such as cultivation, practices, extraction methods and the use of moderns substances used to fix dyes to the material which we have learned a while ago. Sustainable and ecological practices in the entire dyeing process contribute to minimizing the environmental footprints of the natural dyes. So, if one has to understand the safety of natural dyes, one has to accept and know that these are much better than the synthetic dyes because they are biodegradable and they are easily degraded by the microbes that are available in the soil. How does it happen? I mean we have been talking about biodegradability, but one should even understand the process of biodegradability, then only you will accept that yes natural colorants do break down into these substances into simpler compounds through biological or microbial processes. The specific process can vary dependent on type of natural colorant, but here is a general overview. Introduction to the environment, natural colorants are usually applied to materials like textiles, food and other substrates. Once these materials are introduced into the environment, exposure to external factors such as sunlight, moisture and microorganisms initiate the biodegradation process. And that is how we are in a position to say that natural dyes are biodegradable. The biodegradation process where microbial action takes place, the microorganisms including bacteria, fungi and other microbes present in the environment play a crucial role in the biodegradation of natural colorants. The microbes secrete enzymes that break down complex organic molecules into simple molecules. In the case of natural colorants, these enzymes act as a chemical structure on the colorant molecules and break them into smaller molecules. Enzymatic breakdown, enzymes produced by microorganism target specific chemical bonds in the natural colorant molecules. This enzymatic action leads to the cleavage of bonds and the conversion of complex colorant molecules into smaller fragments. Metabolism by microorganism microbes further metabolize the smaller fragments into even simpler compounds such as carbon dioxide, water and other organic substances. The metabolic activities of microorganisms assimilate the breakdown products into their cellular processes. So, it is kind of breaking and using the broken product for its own growth. 
So, that way the biodegradation process proceeds. The biodegradation process then it has an integration into the ecosystem. The breakdown products which are now in simple and more environmentally benign forms become integrated into, into the natural ecosystem. The carbon dioxide and the water and all those things are then released in the nature. These byproducts can be utilized by other organisms as a source of energy or nutrients contributing to natural nutrient cycle. Complete biodegradation over time with continued microbial activity and environmental exposure, the natural colorants and its breakdown products may undergo complete biodegradation. Complete biodegradation is achieved when the original colorant is transformed into substances that do not persist in environment and do not pose ecological harm. So, what it means that the plant material that is the natural dye is metabolized by microbes. The enzymes of the microbes target the bigger molecules and break down to smaller molecules and further more into other smaller molecules like carbon dioxide, water and other components which get into the nutrient cycle, natural nutrient cycle and everything is kind of ecologically safe. The biodegradation process also has an environmental factor. Various environmental factors such as temperature, pH and oxygen availability can influence the rate and efficiency of biodegradation. For example, aerobic that is in the presence of oxygen conditions often promote faster biodegradation. It is important to note that the biodegradability of natural colorants can vary based on the specific chemical composition of each colorant. Additionally, the use of mordants and other processing agents may influence the overall biodegradability of colored materials. Sustainable practices including responsible sourcing of natural colorants and environmentally friendly dyeing processes contribute to minimizing the environmental impact of these substances. So, overall you know it is also dependent on what is the temperature, what is the pH, how much of oxygen is available and then only the biodegradation can be efficiently carried out. We have also been talking about the non-toxic nature of natural dyes. Thus, the non-toxic, non-carcinogenic, biodegradable and eco-friendly characteristic of naturally derived colorants made its own way to reach the hearts of the conscious consumer of healthy lifestyle. Antimicrobial textile as one of the medical textile act by protecting users from hygienic problems resulting from exposure to pathogenic or odor generating microbes, where the growth of the microorganism results in reduction of functionality by undesirable aesthetic changes or rotting damage. New challenges as well as new opportunities in manufacturing of antimicrobial cellulosic textile are the future concern of textile and apparel industry. The major application of antimicrobial textile could be ascribed according to consumers demand, representing in more comfort, easy care, health and durable to laundering. Now, we can have an antimicrobial coating with the help of the particular dye but how much durable it is for the wash cycle is a major concern. So, it should be durable to laundering. Non-hazardous nature of natural dyes. The constituents of natural dyes are typically less toxic 
than the chemicals used in synthetic dye production. However, it is important to note that some of the natural dyes may still contain substances that could cause mild irritation and certain to certain individuals. That means, that the skin chemistry of each individual is different. What may be an irritant to one person need not be an irritant to another person. So, while handling natural dyes, we need to check if a, there is any kind of mild irritation with the dye extract. While natural dyes offer several benefits in terms of non-toxicity and sustainability, it is essential to consider the entire production process and the source of natural dyes. Some natural dyes may still involve processes that have environmental or health implication. So, it is crucial to choose responsibly sourced and produced natural dyes for a truly eco-friendly and non-toxic approach to dyeing. Because we have to be conscious, we have to be careful and not everything is good even in natural dyes. There are some colorants which have been found to be mild irritant and we should avoid using those colorant although they may have good, num good amount of coloring uh, content, but that is not good if it is an irritant also. What makes natural dyes safe? Natural dyes are often considered non-toxic compared to synthetic dyes and their use align with environmental and health conscious practices. Here are several reasons why natural dyes are considered non-toxic. First is biodegradability and we learnt about the biodegradability in quite detail. Natural dyes are derived from plant sources, minerals and insects. Since they come from organic material, they tend to be biodegradable, break down naturally over time and minimizing their environmental impact. Low environmental impact. The production of natural dyes usually involves fewer harmful chemicals and pollutants compared to synthetic dyes. The cultivation of dye plants typically requires less intensive agricultural practices and does not contribute as much to soil and water pollution and therefore, it makes it safe. Reduce Allergenicity. Reduce allergenicity means some people may experience allergies or skin irritation when exposed to synthetic dyes and the chemicals used in their production, natural dyes being derived from plants or other organic sources are generally less likely to cause allergic actions. Now, it is a general phenomena that they are less allergenic. But it is not that every dye is uh, you know anti-allergic. One has to be careful in choosing these. Renewable sources, many natural dyes come from renewable sources such as plants or insects, which can be cultivated or harvested sustainably. This contrasts with some synthetic dyes that rely on petrochemicals or other non-renewable sources along with hazardous processing. So, when we compare <coughs> natural dyes with synthetic dyes, there is a vast difference and that is what makes the natural dyes to come up and that is the reason why it should be practiced. Water conservation which is of a very prime importance in current time. Traditional and cultural use, natural dyes have been used for centuries in various cultures without significant negative health effects. Traditional methods of dyeing often involve techniques that have been refined over generations using materials that were readily available in the local environment. 
water conservation, the dyeing process with natural dyes may require less water than the process with synthetic dyes. Additionally, natural dye wastewater is often less harmful to aquatic ecosystems and can be used for irrigation which I mentioned a while ago. Because they have non-toxic components, the constituents of the natural dyes are typically less toxic than the chemicals used in synthetic dye production. However, it is important to note that some natural dyes may still contain substances that could cause mild irritation in certain individuals and therefore, we need to be careful. Biodiversity preservation. Now, cultural and biodiversity preservation is also one aspect when we are talking about natural dyes. Many natural dyes are deeply rooted in traditional practices and cultural heritage. Utilizing these dyes helps preserve traditional knowledge and supports communities that depend on these resources. Additionally, the cultivation of dye plants can contribute to biodiversity conservation. Hence, we have to look at the biodiversity preservation also from the point of view that many such uh, communities in different regions are trying to preserve their traditional practices and cultural heritage and we should promote them. Local and sustainable agriculture. Natural dye production often involves cultivation of specific plants. This promotes sustainable agricultural practices, supporting local farmers and reducing the environmental impact associated with large scale monocultures and therefore, we should support them. Carbon footprint of natural dyes. Now, this has become the buzzword that carbon footprint should be reduced, while the carbon footprint of natural dye production varies depending on factors such as transportation, cultivation practices. It is often lower than that of the synthetic dyes. The reliance on renewable resources and the avoidance of certain chemical processes contribute to a lower overall carbon footprint. So, this is one more additional point in favor of natural dye and their usage and of course, non-toxicity. As mentioned earlier, natural dyes are generally non-toxic and pose fewer health risk to both human and ecosystem. This aligns with sustainable an eco-friendly principle. It is important to note that the sustainability of natural dyes depends on various factors including the cultivation practices, harvesting methods and overall supply chain transparency. Additionally, the use of natural dyes should be a part of a holistic approach to sustainability in textile industry. Considering factors such as water usage, energy consumption and waste management throughout the entire production processes. So, we have to look it at a very holistic level. There should be less of water usage, less of energy consumption, how we can manage the waste water and the whole process how we are cultivating the plant, harvesting the plant, what is the supply chain. If all these things are taken into consideration, definitely natural dye becomes the best option. Carbon footprint can vary. Now, just by telling that the you know there was no transportation, there was no uh, you know other processes which where energy was consumed. There are you know varying factors and let us acknowledge them also. The carbon footprint of natural dyes can vary depending on several factors including the type of dye, the production process, the transportation methods, 
Generally, natural dyes are considered more environmentally friendly compared to synthetic dyes because they are derived from plant, animal or mineral sources and often require less energy and fewer chemicals in their production. Here are some of the factors that can influence the carbon footprint of the natural dyes. Sources of dye. Dyes derived from locally sourced plant or waste material may have a lower carbon footprint compared to those that require extensive transportation or are cultivated in energy intensive processes. So, that is the reason why I was telling that locally grown flora is a best option for a regional NGO to sustain itself and give employment to the local people by creating a dye house and this would be one of the most ideal situation. Other factors are cultivation and harvesting processes. We have to look at it in a very holistic manner. Sustainable and organic farming methods can reduce the environmental impact associated with the cultivation of dye producing plants. Extraction and processing methods. The methods used to extract colorants from the natural sources can vary in terms of energy consumption and environmental impact. Some of the extraction processes may be more energy efficient than others. So, we should look for methods which are more energy efficient and require less energy consumption and have lower environmental impact. Water and energy, these are two factors which are very, very important consideration in dyeing processes. While natural dyes generally require less energy in the dyeing process compared to synthetic dyes, the overall environmental impact can still be influenced by the specific dyeing method and the use of water and energy during the process. So, we have to target at molecules which will be having lower energy and water demand and processes that are developed by the technologists should aim for that. And we also have come up with waterless dyeing which will be a topic of one of the forthcoming lectures. We will go into it in much greater details. There are more factors to be considered. Transportation. If the natural dye material needed to be transported over long distance, this can contribute to overall carbon footprint. Local sourcing can help minimize transportation related emissions. Waste and byproducts. The disposal of reuse of waste and byproducts from the dyeing process can affect the overall environmental impact. Sustainable practices such as recycling and or using waste as fertilizer can reduce the carbon footprint. More importantly, certification and standards. Some natural dyes may carry certifications or adhere to standards that promote environmentally friendly and socially responsible practices. Example include organic certification or adherence to fair trade principles. So, when we look at an overall image, we have to consider each and every point whether it comes under the safety parameters. In totality, it is important to note that while natural dyes generally have a lower environmental impact than synthetic alternatives, the overall sustainability of the product also depends on other factors such as the type of fiber used, the production processes and the end to of life disposal. Additionally, advancements in sustainable dyeing technology continue to involve and researchers are exploring 
ways to further reduce the environmental impact of both natural and synthetic dyes in the textile industry. What it means that research is going on and people are working very hard to come up with sustainable dyeing technologies and this endeavor is more focused for reducing the environmental impact so that the textile industry is no more considered as a pollutant generating industry. So, when we look at the life cycle of natural dyes, it is cultivated while cultivation energy, water, fertilizer, pesticides are used and some of it is diffused as emission in the air, soil and water. Then the plant material is obtained after cultivation and extraction process is carried out. So, energy and solvent is required for extraction and there is this left out biotic mass which is the residual plant material. From the extractant we get the dye stuff and the dyeing process then again requires energy water modern and we get the dyed textile and we generate waste water. So, this is the entire life cycle of a natural dye from its cultivation to dyed textile. So, general safety aspects of natural dyes have to be considered. Natural dyes are generally considered safe for use and they have been used for centuries in various cultures for coloring fabrics, food and other materials. However, it is important to consider certain safety aspects associated with natural dyes, allergies and sensitivities. Some individuals may be allergic or sensitive to certain natural dyes. It is essential to be aware of potential allergic reaction and perform patch tests before using dyed fabric, especially for items that come into direct contact with the skin. And this is more important for baby wear, where the skin is very tender. Toxicity, while natural dyes are generally non-toxic, certain plants or mineral source used for dyeing may contain toxic materials. Careful selection of dye sources and proper processing can minimize the risks of toxicity. It is crucial to be aware of any potential health hazard associated with specific natural dyes. So, we have to keep this in mind. Environmental impact, moderns, additives, these are all added into the dye bath. Moderns are substances which are used to fix the dye which we have seen and learnt quite a bit. Some of the moderns are toxic such as copper and chromium and their use should be carefully controlled. However, many natural dyes can be applied without the need of toxic moderns or using safe moderns, enzymes, biomoderns, rare earth salts. Understanding the mordanting process is important to ensure safe and sustainable dyeing. Environmental impact also has to be kept in mind. While not a direct safety concern for individuals, the environmental impact of natural dyeing processes should be considered specially when bulk dyeing is done. Some traditional dyeing methods involve the use of large amount of water and wastewater from dyeing processes and that can potentially impact the ecosystem. Therefore, there is a drive for sustainable dyeing practices to aim to minimize environmental impact. So, in this particular chapter, we try to look 
at the various safety aspects that we need to cover while handling natural dyes. We also learnt about the biodegradability process, how microbes under the condition of oxygen that is under aerobic condition are able to break down the dye molecule into smaller and yet smaller and then all the nutrient gets into the nutrient natural cycle. How we can avoid using copper and chromium and those toxic metals to avoid as uh, you know uh, any kind of toxicity generation in the wastewater. Overall a natural dyeing process which can enhance the safety, which can make the process sustainable is what we have to aim at. How it is impacting our ecosystem? How can we avoid using certain chemicals? Also some people have irritation or allergy with some natural dyes. So, a patch test has been recommended because whatever is allergenic to one individual need not be allergenic to the other one. However, we have to ensure that these safety measures are taken into account. And therefore, what we are now trying to understand that natural dyes must be used, they are safe and their safety measures have been discussed in great details. Their limitations have also been discussed. Some of the limitations have been overcome and therefore, we are now recommending that because this has a lesser environmental impact and is sustainable, requires lesser water and the waste water can be used for irrigation. All the natural dye that is remaining in the waste water is biodegradable. The microbes of the soil in presence of oxygen can degrade. Therefore, the whole process is very environmentally friendly and it is a mindful decision that is ethically consideration that while not directly related to safety ethical considerations are still very important. Some natural dye sources may be obtained through unsustainable or exploitative practices. Choosing ethically sourced and sustainable natural dyes support fair trade principles and minimizes negative social impacts. In summary, natural dyes are generally safe when used responsibly but it is crucial to be aware of potential allergens, toxic compounds and environmental consideration. Users should follow breast practices, understand the properties of specific natural dyes and adhere to relevant regulations and guidelines to ensure the safe use of these dyes. So, such a mindful decision if made can make the dyers happy and even the consumers happy. Thank you.